And Joseph of Arimathea places Jesus' dead body in a new tomb, sealing the door with a great stone, and the door was shut. A lot of connections there, huh? So many questions, so much to consider in a little story. So, I always say, start with what you know. As the old, old TV show used to say, just the facts, ma'am. Everyone fell asleep. That's what we know. The wise, the foolish, none of them could stay awake. And Jesus' main point in this whole story was stay awake. Keep awake. So really, both failed. Both were foolish. Just as the disciples will fail in chapter 26 to stay awake, to keep aware, while Jesus is, faces his most difficult hours. And I think the foolishness of the bridesmaids is that they left to find more oil. What would have happened if they had just stayed? What if they had waited for the presence of the bridegroom to come even while waiting in the dark, trusting in the grace and mercy of the bridegroom, that they would have been there waiting at the doors of the banquet to open, even if they had no oil to feed their lamps, that is, No visible faith to burn. What if they were simply filled with trust and the willingness to stay present, even if they felt they were in the dark? Back in Montana, we trusted that the bride would come. We insisted that the judge stay a little longer have some food, enjoy the world-class musician, ask us questions about indigenous culture, anything you want, please stay, just don't leave. And she stayed, and the bride arrived, and the wedding commenced. What if the bridesmaids trusted the bridegroom would embrace them all, whether they were walking in the light or they were walking in darkness? For the psalmist saying of God, night and day are the same, and the night is as bright as the noonday sun to God. The darkness would have not made any difference. In fact, when you listen to the story, it is the wise who tell the foolish to leave and go and get more oil. And I think that was a really sneaky move. It reminds me of mean girls. Mean girls who send the loser girls off on an errand so that they miss the prom and then are locked out, or worse yet, egged at the door. In a straight-up reading, the kingdom of God is, looks an awful lot like life everyday life. We've all been foolish. We've been the foolish whose lamps of faith has run out. We've been the wise who feared sharing what we have with others. We've been the bridegroom who refused to let people in. We have been all of these people the good, the bad, and the ugly. Jesus ends this parable by saying, Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the night, hour. I think, and this is just me, I think it means don't run from the darkness. And that includes times of transition, times of unknowns. They can be uncomfortable. 
We can behave foolishly. We can make mistakes. We can wonder how the past will affect the future. We can worry. Staying awake, I think, means get comfortable feeling uncomfortable sometimes. Get comfortable feeling uncomfortable. Stay, wait, and allow God to meet you where you are and welcome you into the party. Welcome those who have made mistakes and those who sit in the dark. And if you are one who feels that the door has been shut to you, remember so was the tomb. And Easter changed all of that. And Easter changes us to this day so that we can be prepared. Let us be prepared for God's coming at all times and in all places and with all people. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
good and gracious God, we pray that you wake up your church, that we may be ready to respond when we meet Christ in the cries of those in need. We lift up different missions of care in our church, especially Lutheran World Relief and other agencies. We thank you for all the natural resources that are in our world, like coal, coal and oil and trees and sun and water and wind. Help us to use them wisely. We pray that the cries of your people in all nations caught in war and destruction be heard. Hold in your care veterans and their families, ease the burden of tough memories, and bring restoration and wholeness. Shine your merciful and healing light to the despairing places of our minds and souls when we are enwrapped in darkness. Bring about light as the noonday. Bring hope in the midst of danger, depression, and illness. We especially pray for Bonnabelle Luter, Don Kendall, Becky Smith, Lael Biella, Wayne Biggs, John Van Bibber. We pray for the family that grieve of Jer Krakow. We pray blessings upon marriages, for all those who are preparing for marriage and those who have been married in this place, we pray for the strengthening of bonds, of friendship and relationships in our community, that we may have joy in our lives together. Keep us alert, for Christ is coming, that we may hold true and and trust in the promise that we will be reunited with all the faithful who have died. Thank you for their lives and the influence upon us. We pray all these prayers, our hopes and concerns that are in our hearts. We trust you and your loving care for us. In Jesus' name. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise to our God. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness today. We will commune by intinction, and we invite you, when the ushers indicate to come forward, you may place, if you do have a commitment card along, you can place it in the box, and then you will come forward, receive the bread, and then dip it in either the light, dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. There are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know. Come, let us eat.
I invite you to please stand, receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. And now a dedication of our gifts. We dedicate our gifts to you, O God. Vessels of your work in this world. We dedicate our pledges to you, O God. Guide our leaders as they prepare us financially for the upcoming year. Use us, O God, to do your work in this world. Encourage us to see that we are all ministers called into the body of Christ. Use us in our service. And we pray over these gifts, blessing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the power of God strengthen you. May the love of Jesus Christ heal you. And may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>